morning everybody or evening depending on where you're at or good day um i have been missing in action for a while and for that i apologize but i am grateful if you are here watching i am going to do a couple of updates on projects that i've been working on in this video so if you're interested in any of them just let me know um i mean basically i've done tutorials on both of these at some point in the past and I don't have that many videos so it shouldn't be that hard to find um, but I've sort of modified a couple of the things and I wanted to share that that uh, process with you or what I've done to modify them I'm cleaning a spot off of my glasses that's driving me crazy so um, I think you remember me making this full-size folio for keeping your full-size printed digitals in. So I did this in a previous video and I wanted to share with you a couple of changes that I made. I have changed the zipper pockets that I'm using. I found these clear larger zipper pockets at Walmart in the school back to school section and I'll tell you what they were 48 cents a piece which is less than half than you pay at Dollar Tree for the thicker bulkier zipper pouches or even you know clear with print on them zipper pouches they're still a dollar each and I paid 48 cents a piece for these things I'll tell you what I think I've bought almost a hundred of them so far because I keep using them for everything I have used them, I just knocked my trash can over, I have used them to put my clear stamps in, and I absolutely love them. I'm using the three rings again, the ones that you can add to or take away from, and I have not yet made a cover for this, but I may, and I'm enjoying that a lot. Um, I have used them in the same manner, I'm sorry, I'm trying to put this away and pick up my trash can. Um, I've used them in the same manner as that for my dies that I use in my cuddle bug. Um, they are great for that. These things are such a nice size. And so, um, as I show here, you can put, you know, almost finished or, or finished product, uh, projects in them if they're small enough. And you can put the bits and pieces that you cut off in them. And yet the document protectors will hold, there's some more pieces in the, in the little one, will hold the full size sheets that you print off from digitals. Now I'm in the U.S., in case you couldn't tell, <laughs> and um, our pages are eight and a half by 11 and the document protectors are a little larger than that. And this is working so well for me. Um, I'm going to need to make another one just for my own digitals because they're taking up most of the room in this. So, and I, I do have the tabs at the top, but what I did was I stapled them on with my tiny attacher, which I showed in the previous video on how I made this. This is just 12 by 12 pages that I cut to fit a folded over uh, file folder. So these, these 12 by 12 um, scrapbook papers. Sorry, I haven't had breakfast yet and very, not very much tea. Um, these are covering a doubled over file folder and it makes this cover really sturdy. So I made this one and then I better put that over here. <laughs> Everything's going to go tumbling. And then I made this one which um, I really like it's out of the same paper pack as the other one and these are all empty at the, this point as you can see and there are I believe 10 document protectors and 10 of these zipper folders no paper in it and it's still got room to grow because you have these large rings on it and you can take these rings unsnap them take the cover off and add as many as you want in the future. So I wanted to show you that I upgraded the zipper folders from the big bulky ones from Dollar Tree. 
and that these were a whole lot cheaper. In fact, if I can get to Walmart today, I'm going to buy probably 20 or 30 more because I'm using them for everything. So I made this one. And then in the last couple of days, I made this cover here. And the only difference with this one is that I used shiny Mod Podge, the glossy Mod Podge. And I'll tell you what, it, it really makes this way sturdy. Like I may cover my own personal ones with the Mod Podge because as much as I hate Mod Podge, like I detest Mod Podge to no end, but I have like five bottles of it and I want to use it up. But as much as I detest it, it really did come out with a very nice finish on it. And I don't know if you can see the brush strokes, but I sort of did like cross hatches and stuff because I wanted it to look a little textured. And I'll tell you what, it's this is even stiffer than the one that I just showed you. So I'm going to put the holes in this and put document protectors and the little zipper pouches in this one as like I did in this one. And these are going to be my next giveaway. One of these, you'll get to choose, whoever wins will get to choose one of these. Now the giveaway is not in this video. I will do a separate video for that. And it will be when I reach 300, 300 subscribers. I'm at about 250 something right now. <laughs> Don't know if anybody's left because I'm not doing anything or not doing anything interesting. But um, one of these will be your choice as a giveaway for um, my 300 subbies celebration. So there you go. I will finish this one. If the person wants this one Mod Podged, I will do it. If you don't, that's fine. I think the Mod Podge will help protect this if you're going to use it a lot. I really do. And I am probably going to do my cover as well. So there's that. Let me put those aside. Now, um, you know I made these ephemera folders and um, this one, this one is really bulky. It has all of my Tim Holtz in it. So the, I, I'm trying to stay within, I zoomed in the iPad, so I'm trying to stay within the frame here. And so this has all of my, but it also has all of my mistakes in it for when I was trying to figure out the process. And as you can see, I used um, paper for the pages, uh, doubled up paper, scrapbook paper. But it, I find it a little distracting to have that as a background. And there's the back pocket. So this was based on the one that Gail Augustinelli showed us all how to make. And I really like it. I don't use a lot of Tim Holtz ephemera. I don't know why I bought it all, but I don't use it that much. Now, this one is um, the one that I made and I'm using for myself because, again, I made a few mistakes on the binding. Um, the, the sewn in threads are not very good. There's extra holes on there. So this one was, is, is mine as well. And this is where I'm keeping like, you know, cutouts and I still have to organize it a little better. Now I do find that if I have things that are like falling out, I use paper clips to hold them in better. Um, but a lot of them, they just stay where they are. So I, I really like this one because I used a cream color cardstock on this. Now these are all sewn. These document protector pockets are all sewn in. Um, now I haven't had it that long, so I can't swear to how long this will last you. I think there's a better chance of this lasting you longer because of the um, sewn in pockets and the document protectors are less likely to tear as far as a lot of use. So you can see this one has a ton of pages in it. And so um, I did those and I really like using the cream colored cardstock because as I said, you can see what you have a lot better. It may not be as pretty to look at inside, 
but I like it a lot better. So I decided that I wanted to make some smaller ones because if I want to keep my Tracy Fox cutouts from my, uh, uh, I don't know, whoever, <laughs> whoever else does, you know, that you get little cutouts, you know, Rachel from Roxy Creations or whomever you may buy from that has um, the small, you know, cards and, and tags and stuff to print out and then cut out. Once I cut everything out for a kit, I have nowhere to put it, right? So I decided to make smaller ones. And this is just made from a 9 by 12 um, envelope. See? There's the pocket. So you have a large pocket there to put whatever you want in it. I did fold the flap in on this one. Probably not the smartest idea, but it's folded and glued in. I don't know if things will fall out of that or not. And I used some of my own digitals with some stamps on it to decorate the pages. And again, I used the card stock and every page has two pockets on it. Now there are, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 pages, and there are two pockets on each page. So that's like 48 pockets. That's a lot. That's still a lot of pockets. So if you wanted to put like, um, you know, separate by the designer, it this is not nearly as bulky as this. And yes, there's plenty of room for you to fill in the stuff in here and still use it for what you know for each designer if you want to or if you want to separate your stuff by butterflies from labels so you're not flipping through one big book trying to find butterflies and labels and I left these strings on here you could put a tag on here um, to label it it I did cover the binding and cloth so there's that one and then I put this one together last night well not together I <laughs> I made the envelope cover last night um, while sitting in front of TV and I left the flap out and covered it um, but I think I'm gonna have to do some doctoring on the edge here but anyway um, so that's my next one I have to put the fabric in the center here because the center is starting to get worn and all I've done is work it so that it would bend nicely and that it'll bend up enough for me to put these pages in. And I sewed the pages yesterday. So these will go inside here, and then this will come over the top, and there's still plenty of room to put lots of stuff in there, and there's still a pocket here. Like if you had something large you wanted to put in there, or even if you wanted to put like your scissors in there and take fussy cutting with you, you could, you know, take the pages, and when you fussy cut them, put them right into your your folder if you're traveling or waiting in a waiting room or something like that. So I'm going to do a set of three of these and that's that. And then, um, what else? I think that's it. I wanted to show you those updates. I did do this, but I'm going to do a separate video on this and I'm not sure I'm finished with this yet. I, I need to do something on the cover, but this is for the the Foxy Crafters mini challenge. And it's my first time making a mini little book. And I have these little tiny dies that I, I did cutouts of. And so the, the tags became altered paper clips. <laughs> and the pages are um, three, and a half, three by five cardstock that is the graph paper. So there's another tag, there's another tag, paperclip. Um, there's a little, this is the Rita Donnelly flip up pocket and then a little tag in there that could be written on. And then just some blank pages. That's another die cut, another um, die cut that I have that I made into a paperclip, another die cut there. And this is my first time doing a binding in this way. I did not, um, I, I machine sewed it to a piece of fabric and then glued the, the not to fabric, 
to um, one long piece of paper and then glued the paper in. So I think that's called a hidden spine. So there's nothing on the outside. And then I, I left the little sewing threads on, which I don't usually do, but I thought it was cute. So anyway, I wanted to show you that. So that's my quick video of updates on what I've been up to when I have been able to craft. But because of some stuff going on around here, um, some with my son, some with house hunting. <laughs> we, we looked at a really pretty house and it was really nice. It's only five years old, well, well made, well constructed, beautiful interior, but it's only... 1,518 square feet, and I live in a 2,700 square foot house. I'd be downsizing a lot, and I don't know if I can do it. We we were very close. We put earnest money on it, and then that night I couldn't sleep, and I freaked out, and I told the realtor yesterday that I, I just don't know if I can do it. I'm very, very tempted, though, because I like the neighborhood and I like the house a lot. I just wish it was like 300 to 500 square feet bigger. It's so frustrating not to be able to find what I want around here. We've looked and looked and looked. And I'm really scared of taking this one and then the perfect size house with the perfect layout comes along and I'm stuck and I, and I, I won't be able to get it. <laughs> so... Yeah, there's that. And so I have been um, really struggling with all of that. And, and it's frustrating because I, I really shouldn't be worried about downsizing because I've done it before. Um, and I lived in a 1,700 square foot house before, which for the most part worked. Um, but... I, I don't know. It just scares me to have to get rid of too many things. And it's frustrating. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But um, there is a... Um, there's hope. There's hope that things will go well. And then we've been stressing because our oldest horse um, went really, really lame last weekend on it started on Friday and by Sunday she couldn't walk at all and we thought for sure that she was a goner that she was just going to be you know th this was the end she's 29 and I thought for sure that um and my husband thought so too he called the vet out of course that was an emergency phone call and um or phone call emergency visit which was very pricey, but he'll do anything for this horse because he he used to call her his kept woman because he, um, I don't know why I had that out because I was going to use a different glue. <laughs> but yeah, so he's very attached to this horse. And being that she's 29 and has a lot of, a lot of illness going on, it's very, very hard to see them be uncomfortable. But then, you know, the next day she's walking around after the vet visit. She was walking around and doing great. And it it's very, very hard to know when the right time is. I mean, she's eating and drinking and, you know, snarling at people because that's her way. <laughs> But, I don't know. It's it's so hard to know. It really is. So I decided to do this while you're all... While I'm chatting here and telling you my woes. So, yeah. So, um, a week later. Well, almost, yeah, about a week. Because she, she started not feeling good on that Friday last week. And uh, so we were very, very stressed about that. And it, it's all very disconcerting. It's hard to know, you know, when to, when to know the right time for those poor animals. I mean, she, she's not in pain right now, so all's good. There, that's what I wanted to add to that. So isn't that cute? Can you see it? Too much glare? Too much light? I don't know. 
Can't tell. It's been raining and nasty here. We had thunderstorms last night. Big rumbling thunderstorms that come all, you know, sound like they're coming from miles away. Scare me. We used to live in Kansas, and I hated those thunderstorms. Of course, you know, if you've watched The Wizard of Oz, <laughs> tornadoes, Kansas, yeah, you know. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys will take care and come back soon. I promise to have more videos up. I think I'm going to try to just, when I'm crafting and making things, I just want to turn on the videos and, I mean, turn on the camera and do videos. I, I just haven't been comfortable with that. I don't know if you'd be interested or watch that. I don't have a lot of new techniques to share, but hey, we all learn something from each other when we're making, right? So, any who's, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Love you all. I really, really appreciate you being here. Help get me to 300. 300. <laughs> and um, we'll do a giveaway. Okay, and take care, everybody. Check back in soon. Hugs. Love y'all. Bye.